Do you that feel all right? Weird. Prepare to hear horrific tales of incarceration, heartbreak, and hauntings. Fielding, and this is Most Haunted. We're no strangers to Devon and its host of haunted houses, but today we visit a manor house that is oozing with tales of paranormal existence. How well founded will these be? We have 24 hours to unlock the secrets of Chamber Coom Manor. The seaside town of Ilfracombe often attracts crowds, but how many are drawn to its very own paranormal hotspot, a manor house that has a very tragic tale to tell. The earliest available records list a lord of the manor way back in 1162, and in addition to its priest holes, a licensed chapel was added in 1439. Then, a century later, the Oatway family's short but significant stay began. And although their dubious means of income would return to haunt them, a succession of families were happy to call this their home. Recently, its role changed to a working farm, until in 1979, the Chambercombe Manor Trust took ownership, allowing you and I to visit during the summer months. The spirit of a woman called Elizabeth Vi has been seen walking on this 400-year-old floor. The spirit of a man has also been felt by the fireplace, and an old woman dressed in black has been seen sitting on the windowsill. In the 1650s, this belonged to the Otway family. They were, as many Devonshire families, smugglers and shipwreckers. Uh, legend has it that William Otway, was running out of money. His daughter had left and married an Irish sea captain. They hadn't seen her for years. They wrecked a ship, many bodies. They found a young woman lying on the sand. She'd been bashed against the rocks. Her face was, was badly disfigured. He robbed her, and then realized she was still alive. Brought her back here to the house unconscious. Laid her in a bed. Five days later, she died. William was then wondering how to dispose of the body. Went down to the pub in Ilfracombe and was talking to some people who'd got a list of all the people that had been on the shipwreck. There was only one woman. They gave him the name and it was his daughter, Kate. They didn't know what to do with the body and so they bricked up the room where she was and left her lying in the four-poster bed. This is the four-poster bedroom, and there are so many ghost stories attached to it. It has to be one of the most scariest rooms I've ever visited. A child wearing swaddling clothes has actually been seen inside this cot as it rocks from side to side. And as if that wasn't scary enough, the ghost of a woman wearing a grey long dress and a mop cap has been seen standing over it. When people sit in this chair, some of them complain of feeling ill. Others talk about being pushed off. So far, so good. I feel absolutely fine. In the 1880s, a farmer rethatching the roof noticed that there was an extra windowsill, came inside and broke through the wall and found in the four-poster bed the skeleton of that girl still there to that day. Which brings us to the priest hole. Now this just wasn't used by the clergy, it was also used by smugglers. And in the dead of night, dark groans can be heard echoing from it. Since I've been here, the paranormal experience I've had, I'm mostly with a little girl about six years old, roughly six. She wears a little uh, sort of um, a darky blue dress and she has ringlets, brown hair. Um, we think her name is Ellie, and she's normally coming around with me when I'm on my tours. I usually say a few nursery rhymes to her when I start in the mornings, and I say goodnight to her before I go home at night. 
This room holds a terrifying secret. A young girl aged six died in this very room and her ghost has been seen playing in this area along with her friend. Two male entities have also been witnessed in here and one of them supposedly is not a nice character. With cold spots and poltergeist activity, this particular area is going to be very interesting tonight. Parapsychologist Kieran O'Keefe has investigated many manor houses. So what attracts him to this particular property? And how does he intend to get the most from our stay? Kieran, this is an exceptional place for us to investigate because there's so many stories here. And they're really intricate. You know, they have links to the town, links to the local area, links to lots of historical figures, and I just find that fascinating. Now, one particular room has a horrible story uh, attached to it, which is where a skeleton of, of a young woman was actually found sealed up in the room. What do you want to do with that room tonight? Because apparently that's a quite an active place. I'd like to make that an experimental room for at least part of the investigation and focus a lot of equipment there. EMF, uh, temperature, humidity, air pressure, also have trigger objects and have a number of different cameras and motion sensors and hopefully see if we can pick something objective up. The good thing about this investigation is that where we're actually based is in another building away from here. So when people come on a vigil, we know for a fact there is definitely nobody else in here. With the crew being in a separate building and having that walk to the haunted location each time they conduct a vigil, it's building up the anticipation and the fear. So certainly is something psychologically to look out for. There is um, a couple of houses nearby, but there's sort of no main roads. There's no, it's not busy, is it? It's certainly not busy around here, so yeah, we're not going to get any extraneous noise from outside that we could misinterpret as some sort of paranormal communication. It's going to be fantastic, and with these historical accounts, some of us know in depth about the stories, others don't. But what you're finding with each investigation is that the whole evening so seems to build up a narrative of its own. You know, so it starts off with a few little phenomena that people are experiencing and then it's a case of getting information from the medium that's attributed to a spirit or a previous story and we build up on that and in the seance maybe get more detail about the story so as the evening goes on we're almost building our own story that matches the previous accounts and I think if we get that that would be good. This house may offer a relatively uninspired exterior but what lies inside? Before medium David Wells' arrival, guest psychic Gordon Smith would start in the room that for a century and a half lay untouched by human hand. Then it was a crypt for the corpse of a deserted daughter, but nowadays is the centre of the paranormal phenomena at Chambercoo Manor. I know I've got to go to this room because this is sort of where things happen for me. And again, I'm, I'm in this room, but I'm not. I'm also behind this room, here. I'm sorry to keep walking a bit like this, but I want to be between here and here, in this space behind the room. Right. Can you imagine somebody being bricked up in a wall? Mm -hmm. Or somebody being buried beneath floorboards or something like that? There's some very, very strange about this. Right. Catherine, or Kathleen, I'm not sure which, Catherine, Kathleen. It's a name like that that's being shouted out here. This is to do with Ireland, to do with Dublin, and yeah. in and around that area. Oh, right. You're on it's the right somewhere track. called Blackwater, because that's what she's showing me here. And I actually get the sense of the woman coming forward herself. She's not an old woman, I feel as though. <sighs> very, very thin woman. Uh, quite a pretty looking woman, I would say. And there's something about her death that has caused a lot of bad feeling, a lot of guilt. She herself feels terrible. So we can help her? I would say so, absolutely, I hope so, because this is something that I feel really, really strong. Despite dozens of landlords living here, Chamber Coombe is a manor house shrouded in the grief of one particularly unsavoury family. But will the extent of their grief fully manifest as our investigation reaches the witching hour? Can you hear my voice? It's moving, it's moving. Cut. Cut's mm. rocking!
This Devonshire home is Chambercoo Manor, a place that attracts tourists keen to see and hear of the ghosts said to haunt here. The biggest tale that this ancient home has to tell is that of a family who lived here in the 17th century. William Oakway's discovery that he had robbed his drowned daughter taught the smuggler a hard lesson, a guilt that Gordon feels still lingers in the room where the father had left her body to rot behind a bricked up door. Whether people have felt anything on this or not, I don't know, but I do sense terrible, terrible feelings as I come to these stairs. Kathleen, Catherine, she's the one who's been dragged up these stairs. go down the stairs and walk up? Yeah. We'll stand here. I'm horrible, aren't I? I would be reluctant to come up these stairs. There's something, a force, an energy stops me coming up these Whereabouts? stairs. Whereabouts? Right from the very bottom? Yeah. And even walking up, there's a horrid sense of dizziness. And if I close my eyes, I can, it's almost like seeing this again. And I'm actually seeing the woman in sort of green clothes, like, I don't know, green long frocks with Watch sort of yeah. frills and stuff like that. I honestly don't know what time period that would be. So I don't know whether she's been murdered, but I, I get the sense of her being battered. And these people dra dragging her, are they responsible for that? Have they I honestly that? don't know. At the moment, I do feel a lot of guilt. Kate's badly damaged body rendered her unrecognisable to her own parents. So once their realisation had turned to guilt, they did have a place close by in which to seek forgiveness for their treacherous sins. It's like picking up on memory here. And I would, I would go back to the time where there's something to do with smuggling and there's two sides to this, this house. There's one side that is quite, or one side of a family, I've got to say, that are quite nasty. And yet I feel a very humble, a very prayerful side. That's why I'm comfortable mm -hmm. coming in here. The feeling of guilt I had when I was up the stair. It's as though, oh my God, I've prayed so hard to be forgiven. Who are we sitting here? James Wallace. James Wallace. Richard? Yeah. Yeah, does that mean anything? Yes, it does. It does. If I were to say where I felt strongest, certainly the room upstairs and the little gap uh, behind the room, the little door thing you go through, I'm sure people get spooked. They certainly would get spooked at those stairs. That is an energy that just stops you dead, trying to go up there. Okay, and you think we're going to get activity tonight? Oh, I hope so, because yeah. what you want to do is, is to really try and, in some way, help, help her. That, that spirit who is... She came here to do something, or was on her way here to do something, and it never happened. happened. And it's as though she will just keep replaying that part of her memory until somebody points it out. At least three owning families are believed to rest beneath this chapel floor, but it's another former occupant who still looms large at Chambercoo Manor. No one knows if Kate Wallace took a boat ride with the intention of visiting her mother and father's home, or if a cruel twist of fate saw the Oakway's dishevelled and dying daughter unwittingly robbed and entombed by her own cruel kin. And with reports of infantile hauntings often heard in the Chippendale room, David Wells was about to divulge more from this building's paranormal past and present. The first thing that I'm really aware of is that, uh, one strong female presence and the presence of two, two children and one male. The children seem dominant here. Mm -hmm. Two little girls in like classic kind of night shifts. So they're wearing night clothes, they're not wearing daytime clothes. How would old you, would you put them at? Sort of start of school age, like five, six, five, six years old. They're showing me one of them has blood and it's coming from her mouth and it's on her... They, they initially showed me on her um, gown. One has died of an illness by the looks of it. The blood in the mouth tends to what your lungs, I suppose, mm -hmm. or something like that. And the other one just seems to be like a friend. And I can't get why she died. But they're both, but they, <clears throat> they're both seen here. Yeah, both seen here. One is active. If you slept here, she would tug at the clothes, she would move things in the room, she might even do, you know, all these kind of things, that kind right. of stuff. Okay. So anything to get your attention. Mm. All right. But there was one woman who's around the place, around everything. Um, do you want to walk further on? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The tragic sight of Kate isn't the only female thought to roam this manor house. Ellen, her mother, is thought to be the lady seen standing above this crib, perhaps a sign of the maternal love that was sadly lacking whilst both ladies were alive. 
But how much pain will David sense from our next destination? What's the matter? I just really feel sick in this room, nauseous in this room. There's two things going on. There's one, I'm very aware of an astral on this bed. Not this bed. It's not, I don't think it is physically this bed, but that's how the shine may act. Um, of a young woman. She looks like she's been battered to death. I'm very aware also of a baby in that crib and it's rocking backwards and forwards. Mm -hmm. But they don't seem to be linked. Right. So they don't, they don't, that doesn't fit. Okay. That doesn't fit here at all. It shouldn't be here because she's stronger. She's attached to the house. And who is this woman? I'm getting the name Kate from the ether, I guess. And there's a surname as well, which is Wallace. She seems, um, she, she smells of the sea, but she looks like she's been battered. Now, whether she's been physically mm -hmm. battered by someone or whether she's been bashed against rocks or something like that. When would this have happened, do you know? 17th century, late 1600s. OK. Mid-1600s, maybe. Are you saying she died in the sea? No, because I can see her dragged and she seems to be alive. She's been tended to by um, a couple. It's kind of like they're after her money. She's definitely not at peace, and that we know. OK. She's definitely not at peace. Is she here a lot of the time? Permanently. OK. Permanently grounded. And she's saying, this is my tomb. Do you want to walk This on? is my tomb, is what she's saying. One particular female may now have appeared at the forefront of our consciousness. But a move downstairs would soon remind us that other energies still exist within the fabric of Chamberku Manor. This room, again, the male figure seems to be, he seems to be dominating this space. Um, Activity-wise, he might, he might move a few things, I suppose, not, not much. Um, Clocks, mm -hmm. might change clocks. There might be a few clocks that do funny things that be him. Any name with him or...? Patrick. Patrick? Mm -hmm. Patrick okay. was the first name there. Yeah. Late 1700s, early 1800s. Okay. So 16th, 17th century, yeah. Are you excited about this evening? I mean, do you think this girl, Kate, or think we would be able to help her and...? I think we can certainly help her because, you know, there's... there's I can't at the moment see a real reason why she hasn't moved on very often, you know, if they don't move on, there's, they're embarrassed because of their faith or mm. they've done something they, they've murdered or, you know, apart from the fact, I suppose she could feel aggrieved at her treatment. This Devonshire home has provided some of its inhabitants with more misery than anyone deserves, a suffering that is palpable from beyond the grave. Kate appears the strongest astral energy that we have encountered so far. But would the onset of night vision signal a transferal of her anxiety onto our crew's minds? We begin with Richard and Joe, who nestle down in the main hall. Whilst the rest of the crew stand by, we attempt to obtain further sensory details through David and Gordon's seance circle. But in Chamber Coombe's most notorious room, would any of its perpetrators wish to respond? If there's anybody there who wants to communicate with us, please give us a sign. Please knock on the table, touch one of us, come closer to us, to our energy. Just give us a sign you... and we will try and help you. Can you see my trousers moving? Which side? Both of them. Where my shins are. The floor was creaking as well yeah. under the feet. I could feel that under And me. again, <gasps> and again. Can you feel it?
Kate, is this you? Please don't be frightened. I can feel that under my feet. I can too. And again. Whee, oh. It's happening, didn't it? Don't know. It's between me and you here. Yeah. And Maybe. again. Can you get this? Mm. Can you feel it? Can you see anything? No, because you were feeling it down yeah. in the yeah. as well. It's still there on my legs. I can feel it under my feet. Yeah, it, it really did feel like something was playing with my trousers yeah. at the... You getting anything, David? Just, um, just, you know, them circling us. Yeah. Them? It's a, them, yeah, it's more yeah. Than, there's more than one, it's just... Yeah, I can sense a man, will Yeah, there's a man, a woman. Children as well. Can you let us know who's with you? Give David or I the impression, or the girls, anything that comes into your minds. God, I can feel somebody touching my leg now. I feel, I actually feel a male presence coming forward. I'm getting the cold now. Yeah. And I can feel that, I mean, I'm getting really cold as I feel it. And it's his presence, I feel, it's as if he's moving through me. here with us now. Please try hard. Please give us some sort of sign, let us know that you're here. My freezing. So Kate, is this you that's around me now? Or is there somebody else here too? I think there's somebody else, because I'm seeing somebody coming through David, but it's a man I'm seeing. He's... OK. His, left, his right hand yeah. is twitching on mine. Yeah. He needs help, this man. Is this William? Come on, Spirit, can you give me some awareness? It is. Freezing. William. I'm, I mean, I'm seeing clairvoyant across David's face. His face changes. It's like the man's in tears. He's, he's heartbroken. Oh, I just saw somebody in the doorway. There's nobody there, is there? No. no. <clears throat> now, that's strange, because that was a woman, a, a figure of a woman I saw there, just as though she just looked round, but she did not look like the woman I saw earlier. This is another woman. David, are you getting anything? I feel as though he's trying to use David in some way. Mm -hmm. What, speak through him? I don't know, that's what it feels like to me. Try and speak through David. Come on, my friend. William, can you hear my voice? Speak to me, William, please. Speak to me. Is it you, William? Is your name William? William, did you rob from Kate? Is that why you feel so awful? You didn't realise it was Kate, did you? Am I right? You didn't realise it was someone you knew. Please speak to us. Am I speaking the truth? If Kate's here, am I speaking the truth, Kate? Are we witnessing the result of a heartbreak that transcends several centuries? Whilst David is in tears upstairs, who is behind the shadows that are worrying Richard and Joe downstairs? Chamber Coup Manor has a lot more mysteries to uncover. Manor's white, unassuming exterior walls hide a 350-year-old tale that continues to plague the Devonshire home where one particular family gained notoriety. The Oatways were a family of shipwreckers and smugglers who mistakenly robbed their dying daughter, an atrocity that appears to be responsible for this building's modern-day paranormal phenomena. And our opening vigils have provided early evidence of such events, with David and Gordon sensing and channeling William Oatway, a man clearly troubled by his past.
Whilst downstairs, Richard and Joe were growing increasingly troubled by the shadows lurking in the doorway of the main hall. What were you picking up? I could hear you. I could hear what you're saying. Um, guilt. Yeah. It was a horrible feeling. It looked consuming, wasn't it? Yeah. Who's the other woman, though? No, that's been seen. Another woman has been seen yeah. up here. This woman She's normally that? seen by the cot. Really? Well, Standing over the cup. Yeah. That's not Emily, it's like Amelia or Amelia. But I just saw the figure, just mm. like a glance. Yeah. A glance of this. The cup has been known to rock on its own, and a baby oh, has really? been seen inside it with this woman oh, standing God. over it. Uh, who was that? Okay. Oh, my. The door's just gone. But that's the downstairs door here, isn't it? Ooh, come on. That's right. I don't know. I don't know. Hello. 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 Did you just move this door? No, we no, did we not. We're just shitting in. ourselves here. We just sat here and That it door has just opened itself. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just five dishes in my feet. Who is that? The group uh, are sitting by the fireplace. Oh. They're just saying that they're breaking themselves because they saw the door. So they didn't touch the door? They didn't touch the door. I've got a taste of blood in my mouth. Oh, it's horribly strong. This is Kate, this is how she died. Yeah, is it her, right? This is her. Kate, if you're impressing that on me, a taste of blood in my mouth, please move the table. Just to confirm to everyone else that you're here. You said before, though, one of you did, I can't remember, that they saw a child with blood coming from their mouth. Yeah, David did. Yeah, could it not be the child? You didn't, you didn't know. Could it be the child? It could be. The children aren't as strong in this room, though, they're not. No, this is Kate. It's her room, yeah. Mm. The sudden but fluent movement of this ground floor door sounded strange to those of us who were upstairs. But it came as an even greater shock to Richard and Joe, who were motionless at the moment that Richard and his camera literally jumped out of his skin. Nevertheless, the historian was soon composed enough to follow Gordon up to the priest hole, whilst at the same time, a husband and wife decide to join forces and explore the kitchen. But it wasn't long before a strange series of events brought both groups back together. I feel fine at the moment. I don't. I mean, I've, I've never felt truly comfortable in the house anyway. No, not really. It's, but then again, it's been very cold in here. Most of the places we come to are quite warm. And this is outside. It feels like it should be warm. I'm just very aware of you. You know, I've been here before, I'm wandering around, I'm hearing groaning noises. What's this? Alternative. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm hearing groaning noises and uh, a woman going, ah. Oh. That one. Is that you? No. What is that? Is well. That foot on the floor. I think no. You've got a leaf on your shoe that's dragging. No, I've got nothing on my shoes. I just said to it, it's not me. Gordon and Richard, you can hear them. Let's go see how they're doing. This is the place when I came in at first, even when you. I walked around the place, I was drawn right to this yeah. room. I had to come in here, and this is what I felt. There was, in fact, I think I said somebody d was dead in this room. <laughs> and to be honest, I hate it. Even in it, I'm actually feeling 
like I did when we started the visual, the, the very first one. Yeah. And it's the first time since then I've felt that intensity. What was that? What was that? Did you feel that? Yeah. The floor. Kate, we know you're here. Come on, Kate. Richard, I'm feeling icy cold. I am. I'm, I can actually feel her presence. That's, you know, that real icy cold when the spirit comes close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kate, if you're around, please give us another sign. Tap on. Oh, that's nice. That's, yeah. Oh, it's us. It's us, sorry. How are you feeling? We've had bumps. Are you? Feeling bangs. Like you felt bangs? We've had bumps, yeah. yeah. That's what Huge bang. As soon as oh. we came in. What the f is that? It's moving, it's moving. The cot. Cut's rocking. No, no, no. Hang on, hang on, I've got it. I'm not moving. I've got it. I've got the cut. I've got the cut rocking. I've actually got it rocking now. Jesus. What the hell was that? That was under my feet again. That was loud. The, the floor moved. It actually came up. I mean, I felt it here. Gordon. Yeah. What's the name of the woman you think that stands over the cut? Maria. Did David mention Maria? I think it was David. Was it? David? No, no, it was, it was you. Me. Yeah, Maria. yeah, Maria. 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 We know you're here, Maria. Please, can you move the cot again for us? Please show us that you're here. Please rock your baby to sleep for us again. Maria. <laughs> I can hear you. I can hear <laughs> that. You all right? No. Do you want us the, to The floor again? is moving. What is? The floor is actually is coming this? up. That was it, weird. It, it, that's twice. Are you coming in? Yeah, is that if that's OK? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure it's not? I tell you what, though. No, are you we're sure? Not moving, we're just standing it's not. Here. No, I know that, but are you sure it's not the actual weight? Of no, no, no. We've been over here and it's happened. We've been over look, here and it's look. happened. Richard, this floor's not safe. Don't jump up and do no, it. I mean, the thing is, can you manage? Yeah. But when? I'm just here. But we've been hearing noises in that room the whole time, haven't we, Richard? Yeah. So you can't be really moving. Yeah, look, yeah, look. Yeah. we can't do it. You see, look. This is seriously. It's <laughs> <laughs> nothing. I'm, I'm not. No, I see. I, this is the one place it does. I don't it like for it me. in there. I really don't it's like this. The one place it does it for me. I really feel. Well, <sighs> if you, I'm, I'm, I mean, I can come in there, but I think it's probably a good idea if cot I stay goes. here just in case the cock goes. Yeah, and yeah. I, I'm, I'm here to get it. If there's anybody here, any spirit person now, if it's you that's banging on the floor, can you do it again? Bang on the floor again for us if, if there's someone here. That. Here. Is that you, Cal? No. It's not me, I'm here. Okay. Bang twice, please, if you can hear my voice. Bang two times. Can you hear my voice? You got it? I've got it, I've got it. I'm not moving, I've got it. I'll tell you what, it... I'm going to just leave this on there. Yeah. Why don't you guys ask out as you were in there? Yeah. I on it, do you know, I honestly think there's been somebody else here that there's no records of or whatever, mm. or whether you could find them, but I do believe there's been something else here, or another person that's been murdered here, or something bad, and I feel it's a woman. If there is somebody here, whether it's male or female, if it was you that was moving the cot to the crib before, can you do it again? <sighs> You're right. No, I just said something. It was like a cold hand going right over oh. my face there. Carl, were you just talking? Sorry? Were you just talking? When? No. No. Because I'm here. You're this on, my ca on the camera because I'm, I mean, my face is right near there. Yeah. So you're giving He's a just had an icy cold hand. Honestly, real. Look. Oh, this is something. What's the matter? I don't like it. Like it's this. horrible. Yeah. I'll be getting a feeling. There's something underlying, and there it's is. definitely that. There's definitely something. There's something not nice here. Are you alright? Yeah, I should probably get away. I don't know. Do you want me to hold the camera? Uh, no, I should not. Right. Just feel the Oh, come on! Stop playing around with us! There's just the four of us here. We don't mean you any harm. You know that. Come and talk to us. Did you hear that? What? That was a bang in another room. Come and talk to us, please. If you were murdered, if you feel you need help, come and show yourself to us. Do something to let us know you're around. 
Give us some sort of sign. Carl, just do not move. What? No, I What's swear I'm actually seeing you completely change again. This is what I get with David when it's happening to you. Combining these two vigils had really stirred things up, with Gordon's sensors on heightened alert in and around the priest hole, and all at the same time as a crib intermittently rocked in the manor house's most haunted room. What had triggered these events? Was our body weight the only thing responsible for the movement in the priest hole's fragile floor? And had Carl's face really taken on more than just its usual demeanor? More answers await most haunted as we enter our final hours at Chamber Coo Manor. Do you feel all right? Weird. Oh. My oh. Do you look it's evil. changing. Oh. Oh. The County of Devon has offered Most Haunted numerous paranormally active locations in the past, and Chamber Coo Manor is now adding weight to that theory. The hideous crimes committed in and around this Ilfracombe house are now well documented, but as Gordon was about to detail, another man, other than the smuggler William Oatway, may hold a key to who haunts this ancient home. Carl, just do not move. What? No, I swear I'm actually seeing you completely change again. This is what I get with David when it's happening to you. I, oh. Eyebrows, look at that. Oh my oh, God, you're, you're evil, just changing. Carl. You look evil. Oh, your face is changing, it's going distorted. Can you, you can see that, can't you? Like, the I eyebrows see his eyebrows, eyebrows like, are really uh, massive, bushy eyebrows. Like, There's a oh, on it as no, well. but like a swollen yeah, forehead. Oh, and his face is widening out. Yeah. Do you that feel all right, weird. Carl? Hmm? Do you feel alright? I'm glad I, you can feel, see this event because I can. I, feel I, I thought, is it just numb. me? <gasps> his, his face is elongating. Yeah. His forehead is really high. Do, do you see what I mean? Yeah. It, it, but even as he's talking, that's not like him talking. Look. God, Carl, you look. You look. I'm sorry, love, but you look evil. <coughs> I really don't feel very well. Do you want to come out? Yeah, you should. I feel quite sick. You're right. Yeah. Let's yeah. take the camera. Yeah. You're gonna be sick. Oh, God. That was weird. Oh, that didn't look like right. No, it really look, did, not look, did not look like Carl at all. That just, just as I looked around, like, oh, that was the first thing I saw was his big thick eyebrows mm -hmm. and his face. Yeah. And I thought, who are you? <laughs> who was I? There's yeah. something on the line here, there's something There's up definitely there. Up there another mystery attached to this place. And I do feel it's to do with a woman's murder. Definitely to do with a woman's murder. Oh. So who is the man that Gordon is not only sensing, but also now seeing, transfigured into Carl's face? And have we seen and heard the last of either William, Kate or Maria, all of whom are believed to be haunting this manor? Perhaps a return to the four-poster bedroom would offer further evidence of this, particularly as we were all now gathered together and ready to commence with our final seance. Are there any spirit people here? We know that you're here. Please come and talk to us. If you want to leave this place forever and never ever see it again. I believe you. Okay, <laughs> all right. Oh. Is this, is this one, one spirit speaking for a lot or is this everyone speaking together? I think it's this man. Yeah, I do actually. It's not William. You know, I think it's okay. this man. Yeah. So it's the best you can do. I know. Is this it? I'm really not very good at this. I think he's scared, whoever yeah. this man is. He's scared because of something he's done. Is that right? Are you scared because of something that you've done? Are you frightened that you're going to go to hell? Is that what you're frightened? Is that your foot? No. Yeah. Your foot's on top of my foot. I know, foot. but I can feel it lifting up. I know. I'm going to say something bad now, and go I'm on. really sorry. You're a murderer. Did you poison people? Did you poison your wife? Oh. Mm. 
Did you poison other women? What's he saying to you, David? Well, it's more how he's looking. He just looks as bullies often do when this point comes in their life or their death. Scared. Scared. Can you see what he looks like, David? Because I've already seen him and I was wondering what he told me. He's quite a small man. He looks yieldy, rugged, sea captain he look. What are his eyebrows like? Mm. Very bushy. A smell. Stench from him. Tobacco and alcohol smell. Well, already smell yeah. tobacco as well, yeah. Mm. So what does he want? Well, I think he f he's frightened. Oh, you're a misogynist. You don't like women. <coughs> you mind me talking to you then? Don't scare me. Come on, do something else, you coward, you murderer. Either that or leave us alone so somebody else can come forward. Did you hear that noise just before? Mm, yes, I did. What was it? It was like a... Oh, like a groan or... Yeah. Huh. Oh, he's not gone. He's not. He's gone somewhere else. Yeah, he's gone yeah. somewhere else. Something's come downstairs. That was, was that weird. after I said I was a, you didn't like women? Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's an air of... Wait, isn't there? Mm -hmm. What, like something's going to happen? Yeah. Had our misogynist been scared away? Had his communication suddenly stopped due to my forceful words? The majority of Chamber Coon's poltergeist activity had been captured on camera and checked almost immediately for contributory conditions. One thing was clear we had found ourselves amidst more phenomena than we'd initially anticipated. The presence of William Oakway's tragic daughter, Kate, can still be felt here, as can two children and the lady who tentatively watches above the crib where a child once died. Indeed, was this female moan another startling link to either of these women? But can the building's air of underlying evil also be attributed to the misogynistic man who we also now believe to be housed here? Centuries after leaving the physical, what is keeping so many astral energies from finally severing their emotional ties to Chamber Coom Manor? During a vigil in the priest hole, an alleged transfiguration occurred. Gordon reported that Carl's face changed and Yvette also reported the same thing. At the same time, Carl reported kind of a nauseous feeling. Transfiguration, we know as psychologists that your visual perception in such low level lighting can actually play tricks on you. Our eyes become accustomed to the dark and it kind of gives almost like a shape shifting uh, effect going on. And I think that's what was going on with Gordon and Yvette and everybody focusing on Carl, there is a lot of uh, attention focused on him and he may feel as though something is actually happening and the simple act of suggestion may actually cause him to feel a little bit sick and a little bit overcome. For me, the most interesting footage that was captured during the whole investigation was when Carl picked up the crib rocking. Bang two times, can you hear my voice? I've got it, I've got it, I'm not moving, I've got it. This is because it tied in with previous reports and also because the footage was shot from another part of the room. It didn't appear as though anybody was actually around the crib whilst it was rocking. We still have to be a little bit skeptical because we haven't captured the footage at the point where the crib starts rocking. For that reason, there could still be a number of explanations. Somebody could have innocently passed by the crib at that point, or anybody elsewhere in the room or another room, simply by stepping on a floorboard, could actually cause the crib to rock momentarily. But still, for me, it's quite impressive footage.
Despite our offers of help, when will the supposed hauntings abate, allowing some souls to forgive, forget, and finally move on? Until next time, sleep tight.